we're going to look at how to add a Superbase Cloud API service to DraftBit. So there are two things that you need, a Superbase account that has a backend as a service already set up, and you need to be able to obviously have a DraftBit account. So let's start with looking at Superbase. So I have a project here, I call it Starter App, and it has some auth request, and that's about it. If we look at our table here, there are two users, and that information is what we're going to attempt to pull into DraftBit. And so we're going to test that right now. So the first thing you want to do is go down to your API settings. And inside of API with Superbase, you should already be familiar with this if you've been using it. But this is the link here. And all of the information that we need will be located inside of Bash, but we need to actually visit the table we want to look at. So we're going to look at this users. And so the way that we do that, these are the Bash templates. And here we want to show anonymous public, for instance. And this key will be changed by the time this is public. So don't attempt to use it. It's not going to work. But the important part is the API key and the authorization bearer. And they are the same. Um, but when you start looking at row, row level security, that becomes an important part of how this is set up. And one of these could be different. All right. Now, <clears throat> we go into DraftBit. We click on Superbase. And we give it a name. I'm just going to call this test set up okay and the first thing that it wants is this base url when we come over here any of these curl uh, commands have the base url and the base url is through co do not grab the following slash and so you're going to put it in here notice it does not show in the example the ending slash and we're going to paste that in the next thing we have to do is set up the headers and the authentication. So we can leave these here for now, but we need to add a couple more. First one that we need to add is API key. And that API key is right here. And you want to add it the exact same way they show it, API key. And so let me modify this. And you come over here and you paste it. These little forms are a little tricky. They don't always accept the data right off the bat. Notice it turned blue. That's what we want. The next one is authorization. So we type in our authorization. And this is a bearer. We look back at our structure authorization. You do not include the colon. Authorization is the key. And the value is bearer, space, and the token. And so we come back over here and we say bearer, space, token. Make sure you hit enter and it turns blue. Now, if you come down through here and you look at the standard setup, everything is pretty much the same until you get down here to these. Content type application JSON. We have content type application JSON. You may want to include this. So this is prefer. So we'll add that. And what this does is when you make an insert a post, it will return for you what you just posted. So it gives you a return copy without you having to then do a get by ID. So it's a pretty nice feature to have in there. Make sure there's no quotes around it. And then finally is range right here. And that's how you do your pagination and your fil with your filtering. So let's go ahead and add that range. 
and you can put in any number you want. Zero to nine is kind of the default, but this will actually change as you determine pagination, but this is a, a good way to remember to have it. All right, now you save it and you're ready to create endpoints. And that will be the next video. Thank you very much.